Well hey there folks, and welcome back to another episode of Smooth Brain EDH. Today, we're bringing some Kaldheim Commanders to you. I hope you're as excited to see the game as I am. And special thanks to Cody and Justin for buying the collector's boxes so we could play with these commanders. Alright, now let's see who's playing what. First up is Cody, who's playing Coma. His main objective is to gum up the board with creatures and creature tokens. His main win is through combat damage and overrun effects. Up next is Logan, who's playing Tear Grid. He's trying to make people discard and sacrifice stuff so he can get it back with Tear Grid. And if that's not enough, he can also win with big X spells like Torment of Hailfire. Up next is Ethan, who's playing Cole. This is an artifact combo deck that's trying to win by casting zero drop creatures, equipping them with zero equip cost equipment, and then infinitely sacrificing them with Cole out. And then we have Justin playing Essica. This five color deck has a lot of legendary creatures and gods in it. He's planning to grind out a lot of value and win with a few different combos. All right, and now that we know who's playing what, let's take a look at their hands. First up is Cody, who keeps a hand of two snow-covered islands, snow-covered forest, frost auger, negate, triumph of the hordes, and Essica's chariot. Next, Logan also keeps a seven of swamp, Pajukabog, Gaia Reach Sanitarium, Everflowing Chalice, Vidalcan Ori, Yogmoth's Will, and Torment of Hailfire. Up next is Ethan, who keeps an Ancient Tomb, an Ancient Den, Boros Sigment, Talisman of Conviction, Sword of the Animus, Stormrider's Rig, and a Runaway Steamkin. And lastly is Justin. Unfortunately, he had to mulligan to five, but he kept a hand of Marsh Flats, Altar of the Brood, Path to Exile, Blasting Station, Thran Temporal Gateway, and he bought him Sisse Weatherlight Captain and Nickel Bolas Dragon God. Alright, I'm excited to see what happens. Let's get into the game. Justin wins the die roll, starts off by shocking in an overgrown tomb, and casts Altar of the Brood. Up next, Ethan plays Ancient Tomb, takes two, and casts Boro Signet. Passes to Cody. Cody plays a Snow Covered Forest and casts the Soul Ring that he drew. He passes to Logan after that. On Logan's turn, he just plays a Swamp and passes to Justin. Justin plays his Marsh Flats, triggering Altar of the Brood, and everyone else mills one. He then fetches and passes while searching. He eventually finds an ice tunnel and everybody mills one card. Ethan starts his turn off with a Great Furnace, then casts Talisman of Conviction, taking two to Ancient Tomb, and finishes his turn with a Runaway Steamkin. Cody plays a Snow-Covered Island for turn, and then casts Frost Augur, then passes to Logan. On Logan's turn, he plays a Swamp and casts his own Soul Ring. After that, he uses the Soul Ring to cast Everflowing Chalice, kicked once. He passes after that. Unfortunately, Justin misses a land drop, and he passes to Ethan. And Ethan cycles Forgotten Cave on his instep. Ethan starts his turn off with an Ancient Den, and then casts Sword of the Animus, taking two to Ancient Tomb. He then equips it to run away Steamkin, and then casts Cole, getting a counter on the Steamkin. He then moves to combat and swings three at Logan. Sword of the Animus triggers, and he finds a basic land to the battlefield tapped. Ethan passes the turn to Cody, who plays another Snow-Covered Island. He then taps for two, casting Kinnon, before passing to Logan. Logan plays his Gaia Reach Sanitarium, and then casts his commander, Tear Grid. He then passes to Justin, who unfortunately misses another land drop, and passes to Ethan. At this point, Cody has to take an important phone call and steps away, but he says he has responses. Ethan plays a Fabled Passage as land for turn. Ethan then casts Grim Monolith, into Stormrider Rig, into Mirror Moon Vessel. Ethan then attaches Stormrider Rig to the Mirror upon ETB. Cody says he wants to negate the Grim Monolith when he gets back, so Ethan moves to combat and swings three at him. Sword of the Animus triggers, and Ethan cracks his Fabled Passage to search for two basic lands. He gets a Mountain and a Plains, and the Mountain comes in untapped from the Fabled Passage. Cody returns, showing, and paying for the negate. He takes the three damage. I definitely deserve that. And then Ethan passes the turn. Cody plays another Snow-Covered Island. He then activates Frost Augur, looking at the top part of his library. It is not a snow permanent, so instead, he casts Essica's Chariot, making two 2-2 two -two cat tokens. With nothing left to do, he passes to Logan. And on his turn, Logan casts Yogmoth's Will. Yogg's Will is exiled, and then he plays the only two cards in his graveyard, which were milled by Justin, a Swamp, and an Anvil of Bogarden. Logan then passes to Justin, who draws two and discards one. Justin, wanting to make some impact on the board, discards Nickel Bolas Dragon God. And when he discards it, Logan gains control of it. And even with the extra draw, Justin misses another land drop and passes to Ethan. On his draw step, Ethan draws two and discards a planes. Logan gains control of it. Ethan then taps for four and casts Smothering Tithe. Ethan then moves to combat, swinging the Steamkin and the Mirror and Nicol Bolas. Sword of the Animus triggers and Ethan gets another land to the battlefield tapped. 
Logan blocks the Steamkin with Terragrid, and Ethan returns it to his hand thanks to Cole. And Nicol Bolas loses two loyalty. Ethan then recasts the Steamkin and re-equips the sword, taking two to the Ancient Tomb. Hoping Cody can kill the Nicol Bolas, Ethan passes. Cody draws two and does not pay for Smothering Dive. He discards a Snow-Covered Island, which Logan gains control of, and then taps Soul Ring for three, casting Arcane Signet. With one mana left over from Soul Ring, Cody casts Coma. He then crews the Chariot with Coma and moves to combat, swinging the Cats and the Chariot at Nicol Bolas. Logan blocks the Chariot with Tear Grid after it makes another Cat token, and Nicol Bolas dies. Cody then passes to Logan and makes a snake on his upkeep. Logan draws two and discards off of the anvil, and Ethan makes two more treasures because Logan doesn't pay. Logan plays a swamp on his turn and then taps for four, casting Veldok and Ori. Then taps for three, casting Bottomless Pit. He activates Gaia Reed's Sanitarium after that, and everyone draws and discards. Ethan, with no cards in hand, flips a Basalt Monolith off the top of his library, and Logan gains control of it. Also, nobody pays for Smothering Tithe. No one else discards a permanent, so he passes. Justin discards Swords to Plowshares at random on his upkeep, and Cody makes a snake. Justin then draws two and discards a Path to Exile. Thankfully, he finds another land and plays a Sulfurous Mire, but unfortunately, he misses his Alter the Brood trigger. He then passes the turn. On Ethan's turn, he's unaffected by Bottomless Pit because he's empty-handed. He then draws two and discards Blasphemous Act. He then taps for two and casts Open the Armory. He finds a Skull Clamp to his hand. Ethan then taps the Ancient Tomb to cast the Skull Clamp and equip it to his Mirror. Then he equips Stormrider's Rig to run away Steamkin, causing the mirror to die. He gets a mana and draws two cards. Cole returns the mirror to his hand. Ethan then casts Goblin Matron, searching up a goblin to his hand. And yes, of course, he finds Dockside Extortionist. And Runaway Steamkin gets a counter. He then casts Dockside Extortionist, giving the Steamkin another counter, and makes 10 more treasures. Ethan then equips Goblin Matron with Skull Clamp. It dies, gets bounced to his hand, and he draws two cards. He then recasts Mirror Moon Vessel with its own mana, and then equips Skull Clamp to it, bouncing it back to his hand and drawing two cards. He then plays Kirkshank Kobolds, getting another counter on Steamkin, removes those counters to get three mana, equips the Skull Clamp, bouncing the Kobold back to his hand and drawing two cards. He then recasts the Kobold, equips the Skull Clamp again and draws two more cards while bouncing it to his hand. He repeats his draw two cards loop, remembers Steamkin should have another counter. It's at this point that Cody and Ethan realize he can go infinite with Steamkin and draw his entire deck. And Cody decides to sacrifice a serpent to activate Koma's ability in response to Ethan casting the Kobold again, tapping down a creature or artifact, and removing its activated abilities. And Steamkin gets another counter. Skull Clamp can't equip anymore, so Ethan cannot continue his combo. Ethan then plays Spectator Seating as his land for turn, then casts Sigh of the Shinobi into Swiftfoot Boots, and he puts him on the Extortionist. He then moves to combat and swings six at Logan. Sword of the Animus triggers, and he gets a basic land to the battlefield tapped. But Logan takes six before Ethan passes to Cody. And on Cody's upkeep, he makes another Serpent, and discards Triumph of the Hordes at random. He then draws two and discards a Snow-Covered Island, which Logan gains control of, and Ethan gets two more treasures. He then activates Frost Augur, which reveals and puts to hand Arkham's Astrolabe. He then casts the Arkham's Astrolabe, drawing a card. He then casts Sculptor of Winter. He then casts Finn the Fangbearer and moves to combat. But before he declares attacks, he sacrifices his Snake with Summoning Sickness and taps down Tear Grid. He then sends 18 at Logan, who takes all of it. Everyone prays Logan doesn't have one of his big X sacrifice spells, and Cody passes to him. Cody makes a snake on his upkeep, and Logan discards a swamp at random. He then draws two and discards one, not paying Smothering Tithe tax. Logan starts counting mana, and a sense of dread fills the room. Logan floats 14 mana and casts Death Cloud, X is equal to 11. If this spell resolves, everyone will lose 11 life, discard 11 cards, sacrifice 11 creatures, and sacrifice 11 lands. And the worst part is, Teragrid will trigger on all of those. With no responses at the table, everyone discards their hands, sacrifices their lands, sacrifices their creatures, and lose 11 life. And pretty much all permanents lost this way are now under Logan's control. And this is Logan's board after the spell resolves and he organizes it a bit. Of course, he shouldn't have the two artifacts from Cody, but uh, everyone concedes. Welcome to the end of the video, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you really enjoyed it. If you like these Kaldheim Commanders, please let us know in the comments and by subscribing and liking the video. We plan on doing more in the near future. And don't forget to check us out on Twitter and Instagram.
We post a lot of the behind the scenes work, and it'll notify you whenever new uploads come out. See you guys in the next game.